Hey guys, this is test 41, game 4. This is the circular picnic table game. Of course, circular, circular games are very rare. They're quite uncommon. There have only been a few of them in recent LSAT history. This is the most recent of those examples. This game is a little bit tough. Of course, it's unusual. If you saw it, you might have gotten a little bit freaked out, but don't worry. It is manageable. It is actually very similar to an ordering game just it, the end and the beginning loop back around. So to deal with this, I've created a diagram kind of like spokes on a wheel here. Just imagine a circle running around the entire thing. So F, then the next thing, and the next thing, then the next, then G. Of course, it goes both ways, although over the course of the game, they will typically refer to things being clockwise, or they will not specify. So remember, of course, a clock, analog clocks go this way, going all the way around. Now, I've laid out the diagram and some rules. Don't worry, I'm going to explain all of that. They tell us F is immediately across from, directly across from George, so I put F on top, G on bottom. Of course, this is arbitrary. I just want to specifically lay them out. Next, we have that H is next to neither F nor K. So we know H is not next to K. I've drawn that on the side. We can also say that F is not next to H. So I'll put an H on each slot next to F where it might go. Of course, saying that it is not there, we have I is immediately next to and clockwise from O. So I've drawn two little possibilities here on the side. Imagine this kind of as a circle here. We have O and then clockwise from that is I. So imagine O is at like, you know, 2 o'clock and I is at 3 o'clock in a, a kind of a box there, but a curved one. Then on the other side, I have O. Let's say O is at like, 7 o'clock and I is at 9 o'clock. Imagine this curving as well. So here's our circle. I drew, kind of drew these two little quarter circles to represent the two different ways that might, two different ways that might play out. And this is an, essentially our initial setup for the game. So question number 18 is a typical orientation question. Of course, this is only a partial orientation question, but you just want to take one rule at a time apply it to all five choices looking for violations. So for example, we know that K and H can never touch. If you run through the choices, you will find that choice E has H and K touching. That is unacceptable. So for that reason, choice E is eliminated. Next, you could take the rule that O and I have to be touching in this particular way. Running through the choices, choice D is violating that having M immediately clockwise after O rather than I immediately clockwise after it. So D is gone. Now, the other rule we haven't really made use of is the idea that F and G are immediately across from each other, meaning there are exactly three spaces between F and G. Choice A is violating that because it has only two spaces between them, not three. So for that reason, A is gone. And then choice B violates the same rule by not mentioning either F or G in the choice, meaning they must be together in the other four variables not mentioned, not having exactly three spaces between them. So what you learn here is that there must always be, and for any con consecutive set of four, like F something, 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 you must have at least one, exactly one of F or G included in any consecutive listing of four variables. So by elimination, sees our answer to number 18. Next, number 19, if H and O are each immediately next to G. So we can lay out what that might look like. Because nothing here is referring to consecutive variables or clockwise, we can just kind of plop down one of H and O on either side and run through the choices from there, hoping for a hit. So if H and O are on either side here, we can then infer that K cannot be here and cannot be here. So we can infer that I will have to go over here given the OI clockwise ordering rule. We can also infer that K will never go here since K and H never touch. Therefore, K will go either between I and F or between F and whatever is coming next to H right here meaning that the only variables left to go between ne next to H on this side will be M or P. And then whichever one of M or P does not go next to H here will be the alternator with K 
in its remaining slots. So now they're asking us who could each sit next to P. So of course we can automatically eliminate G and O since they are never going to be anywhere near P. So for that reason we get to get rid of B right off the bat for number 19. Then from there let's think about well what could go next to P. We could have H on one side and K on the other, H on one side and M on the other. So you could kind of run through the choices that way looking for hits, or you could just run through the choices themselves. I'll run through the choices themselves. Could we have F and K on either side of P? No, because K is either here or here on either side of F. So for that reason, we can automatically eliminate choice A. Do we ever have H and I on either side? Of course not. I is over here. H is over there. We have two things between them, O and G, not P. So for that reason, C is gone. Next, H and K. Could those be on either side of P? Yes, we could have K here, and of course we have to have H here. So P could be right between them, and then we'd have M between H, between F and I. So for that reason, D is our answer. I will look at E though, K and M. We either have P here or P here. If P is on the upper left of the diagram, we'd have F and I between it. If P is on the bottom, the, the right middle, we'd have H and K between it, as we just discussed. And if we had P here, we'd have F and M between it. So one of those three things will have to be the answer, as we saw H and K was. But no, K and M is never, so E is gone, leaving D if you didn't get it before. Next, number 20. If G is not immediately next to H, so H is not going to be here and H is not going to be here. That leaves H to be either on the immediate on the left or on the right, not upper or lower because H already can't be next to F. So I'm just going to plop down H over here and see what happens given that the question and the choices are not referring to anything being clockwise. So who could sit immediately next to M? Well, we have a few different possibilities here, but we can make a few inferences first. Given the OI rule that those are two consecutive things, they can't be happening on the left side of the diagram because there's just no room for it. So either we're going to have O next to F and then I immediately after it, or we will have O here and then I coming a little bit later next to G. Now we know that K and H can never touch, so for that reason, K cannot be here or here. K is going to have to be on the right side wherever O and I are not. So when O is next to F, we'll have O, I, K. And when I is next to G, we will have K, O, I. Then we have P and M remaining, so they will go on either side of H. You know, either P is after H or M is after H going clockwise, leaving M slash P to go next to O. Now they're asking us who could be immediately next to M. It's either going to be H, F, or it's going to be G, H, and we see H, F in choice A. G, H was not a choice, so A is our answer to number 20. Next, number 21, if M is immediately next to O, and we already know that O is immediately next to I, this gives us a consecutive layout of M, O, I coming down the left side, and then we'd have, you know, another possibility we'll have three other things here or we'll have three other things here and then have M O I coming up the left side. Now remaining variables we would have, what would those be? Well we know that you know K can never touch H and we know H cannot ever be here. So we'd have to have K and H occurring together with one other variable which of course would be P. So P will have to separate K and H given that they conflict and H can't be next to F so we're going to have K P H coming down the right side if we had M O I coming up the left side or we would have to have coming up the left side we, we could have um, H P K in order to avoid having H and F touch over here so either we have M O I G H P K in the inner circle, or we have K P H M G M O I 
on the outer circle our two different possibilities for this question. Now, who must sit immediately next to F? You see here that we either have MF, KFM in the inner circle, or KFI on the outer circle. Either way, K has to touch F. M might touch F, I might touch F, but K is the one that absolutely must touch F. So for that reason, C is our answer to number 21. Next question, number 22. The minimum possible number of people between I and M going clockwise. Now, we actually saw back from number 19, we could, back in number 19 we had H here, we had O here, we had I here, and they were asking us back in number 19, if H and O were immediately next to G, who could be next to P? So we saw that P could have been any of these three slots, and we could have had perhaps P over here, M over here, and then K over here. So we actually saw I, M right next to each other, count M counting clockwise from I going around, zero people between them. So for that reason, back from number 19, we saw that it was possible to have zero people between them. So A is our answer to number 22. Next, number 23, if K is immediately across from I, four of these people could be next to O and one cannot. So we don't have much previous work to make use of. We do have an example from number 21, though. We had K here, I here, and then we could have had M here, O here, H here, and P here. So from that one, we saw M next to O. So for that reason, we can automatically eliminate choice D. Of course, I is not a choice because that would, of course, be too easy. We already know from the original rules that O and I can touch and in fact must touch. So we're going to have to create a new, a new diagram. So this time let's put K and I across from each other right down the middle going across. So if we put K here and I over here, what's going to happen? Well we need to satisfy the OI rule, so O is going to go right here, and then after that we do have some ambiguity. We know that H cannot be here, so H will be either next to G on the left or next to G on the right, it cannot be here. So for that reason, we're going to have P or M here. And then whichever one of P or M does not go here, will go here or here. Now, again, who's touching O this time? Of course, we see that F is touching O. So for that reason, we can eliminate A. But we still haven't gotten where we want to go. So for that reason, we'll have to create yet another diagram. So this time, let's put K over here and I over here. Of course, that would require O to go here. We can't have H go here because of F. It can't go here because of F. It also can't go here because H and K conflict. So we are not able to make a valid scenario when we put H and K going this way. So for this reason, we know that the problem is G being here. G cannot be next to O because putting G next to O as a result of putting I here forced us to not have any valid diagram. So for this reason, B, George, is our answer to number 23. Next, number 24, if K is immediately across from H, what's the minimum number of people we could have between G and K? So we can't put K here because H can't be across from it there. We cannot put K here because then H cannot be across from it there. If we put K over here, we would have you know, very few people, but the problem that would result is we wouldn't be able to fit the OI rule box right here as we need to do. So for that reason, we cannot have zero between G and K due to the reasons I stated before, H can't be across from it, so A is gone. We also know that we cannot have only one person between them because then we have no room for OI. So for that reason, having K and H horizontal is not going to work. We're not going to be able to satisfy it in that case. So for that reason, we're going to have to put K and H even farther across from each other. I'm going to put K up here, H over there, and then we easily have room for OI. We could put O here, I there, and then we have P and M interchangeable on the remaining empty spaces. And of course, this works out fine. So for this reason, 
where you can infer that we could have two people between G here and K there. That works out. And we couldn't have 0 or 1, so this is the minimum leaving two C's that were answered number 24.